What's up everyone, and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Redstone tutorial video. This time, we're going to be looking at the 3x2 piston doors. My hope is that after watching this guide, you'll be able to build your very own 3x2 piston doors from scratch and know how they work. I'll start off by showing you some examples of the door, and then break it down section by section so that you can understand how each piece works. But before we jump into it, let me give a big shout out to all of my subscribers. Thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. And if you're not subscribed, thank you so much for being here. It is because of all of you that I can keep making videos. So here are a few examples of the 3x2 flush piston doors. This one is fairly compacted. I tried to design these in a way that you could be able to build them just by looking at it if you want to build it that way. Especially with this second design. I really tried to spread it out so that most of the build is flat so you can see what's going on from a single angle and there's not much like hidden compacted stuff. But basically, in a nutshell, these blue sections power the six side pistons and they need to be delayed by two full repeaters. Then you have a bottom section and a top section that just needs to power the top and bottom middle pistons. Glass on top of any of the pistons that need redstone on top so they don't accidentally activate at the wrong time. And then this piston extender in the back here with two slime. The slime will need obsidian around it so it doesn't move any of the other blocks. But that's how you activate the two center pistons when the door is closing. But for now, let's take a step back and look at the basic three tall piston door. These designs are much simpler than the flush doors are. This one in particular runs the redstone underneath the ground for pressure plate activation or low set levers or buttons. And this second design runs the redstone above the door so that you can place your input higher up. This is also a nice example that your redstone torch is actually the thing interacting with the door. Your button or your lever is just interacting with that redstone torch. So you can run your input, your button, your lever, or your pressure plate wherever you want to as long as it turns off this torch. You know, you can come way out here, or you can fish it off to the side, or you can even curve it around underground. It really doesn't matter where you put your input. As long as it makes it to that torch, the door will work just fine. So an example of having the button on the side, you could just simply build a wall here, run the redstone from that torch to the button, and it will work. Think of it as two separate things. You have your door, and then you have your input. The input just goes to the redstone torch, which controls the door. But now let's break down the flush piston door so that we can better understand how they work. So basically, you have nine pistons that need to activate. The six on the side that push the three middle ones will need two full repeater delays so that the side pistons retract after the middle ones do. You want the middle ones to retract first and then the side ones to pull them back into place. The middle pistons will be activated from the top and from the bottom. The top will need either obsidian or glazed terracotta so that the slime doesn't move it. They don't need any delay because they won't activate until the side pistons push them into the middle. You'll also need this glass right here so it doesn't activate the piston at the wrong time. The real trick is activating the middle pistons of the center section. The top and the bottom will activate just fine with a little bit of dust, but the middle pistons will require a piston extender with some slime, some redstone blocks, and a repeater set on three tick delay. So you'll need to poke that repeater twice so that it's on three tick delay, going into the side of one of the upper pistons. So what will happen is this repeater will power one of the top pistons, which will push the slime, which will carry the other piston down. Then that piston will activate with the same activation that the middle top pistons do, and it will push it even further down. Slime can't move extended pistons, which is one reason you need that delay, but also why the slime doesn't move the top pistons of the middle section. Also remember, when you go to hide your redstone and build your building, to place glazed terracotta or obsidian around those slime blocks. You wouldn't want those slime blocks to attach to random parts of your building. And that's really all there is to it. Now all that's left is to attach all these sections together, but let's break it down one more time. So the top and the bottom will activate first before the sides, but the middle pistons won't actually be there to receive the signal until the side pistons push them inwards. This is why the side pistons need two repeaters on maximum delay. Having such a large delay will cause them to activate last, but more importantly, it will cause them to deactivate last. It'll ensure that the middle pistons have already retracted by the time the side pistons pull them backwards. So this is the order that everything will deactivate in. First the bottom, then the top, then the sides. Now all that's left is to connect it all together. So where these iron blocks are simply need to be connected together with a line of redstone. It doesn't really matter how you connect it all together as long as you connect it together before all the repeaters. Just as long as each section and its repeaters are connected to one solid line, it will work. You can use solid blocks or you can use glass to be more compactful. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use solid blocks to make it easy to understand. I'll just kind of work my way down like so and just connect all of these sections together. Again, it doesn't really matter how you tie all these together. Signal strength might be an issue, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Now this other side, you can actually run it out of the bottom of those repeaters there or you can run it from the top. 
We're gonna run it from the top just so I can remind you to place glass on top of these pistons if you place redstone dust on top of them. You wouldn't want them to activate at a random time because you didn't place glass there. And then connect all the redstone and there you go. Now it's all connected together. Now you can put your input anywhere along this line. As long as this line is solid before all the repeaters, it doesn't matter where you put your input. You can put it on the top, you can run it off the bottom, you can use a lever or a pressure plate or a button, but depending on where you put it, you might need to refresh the signal with a repeater. So if it doesn't work, just check and see where the redstone stops. Be sure to not place a repeater on top of those two obsidian blocks. But other than that, you can place your repeater anywhere you want to to refresh the signal to make sure the signal is strong enough. You know, again, you could place it, you know, if it's not strong enough going down, you can place it down here, or you can place it really anywhere along this line that you want to. It shouldn't affect anything really. Just see where your input dies and place a repeater there. You know, I'm kind of just placing repeaters in random places now just to show you that it doesn't matter, you know, where your refreshing repeater goes. But, you know, just remember that your input has to be before these repeaters. And if you want to use a button or a pressure plate, you'll need a redstone torch somewhere on the line. Now, you can either run this, like, away from the line and have it be its own little thing, or you can just place it directly on the line. Now, if you place it underneath these blue blocks, it'll still work, but the door will change its timing slightly, so it'll look a little strange. Uh, but just to show you, you can place, like, a redstone torch here, then run a button out to it that turns it off, the door will work, but you'll probably want to add a signal extender so that you actually have enough time to make it through the door. So we're going to add a comparator signal extender down here where this button is, place a comparator going one way, comparator going the other direction, then surround it by redstone like so. And this will extend the duration that the door is open, and if you want it to stay open even longer, that's pretty easy. We just simply place a block coming out of one of these comparators instead of a redstone dust. So let's break this dust and place a block here, and now the door will stay open even longer, giving you plenty of time to make it to the door. And if your button is even farther away, you could always add some repeaters on max delay before the comparators to kind of give you a little bit of time before the door starts to open. Or if you want to run your input to the top of the machine, that's just as easy. Let me switch out some of these repeaters really quick so that it doesn't mess anything up. And so just like running your input to the bottom, it's super easy. Simply place a redstone torch somewhere on this top line. You can always run a redstone out and place the torch somewhere else if you want to. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to place the redstone torch right here like so. This way it's easy to run a signal to it from the front and the back, but let me get rid of this other torch and this signal extender and all these other refreshing repeaters that I made earlier. Now it's just a matter of running your input to that torch. Remember that your input is basically separate from the machine. That torch turns on and off the machine. Now you just need something that turns on and off that torch. So run some redstone dust to that torch, make sure it doesn't connect to any of the other redstone dust in the machine, and then place your button. Now you can run this pretty much anywhere you want to, up or down or left or right. Just make sure it turns off the torch and that it gives you enough time to make it through the door. So we're gonna add another comparator extender right here to give you enough time to make it through the door. So with some redstone dust and a solid block coming out of one of the comparators. And you can build this on both sides so that you have a button on both sides of the door that opens and closes it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you're having trouble figuring out where or how to run your input to that redstone torch, uh, just play around with it. The more you experiment, the more you'll learn. I also have a Let's Learn Redstone series starting with the basics of redstone, working our way up to more complex features. I'll be sure to link that in the description of the video. I've also made a bunch of other tutorials ranging from redstone games to just little fun things and other doors. So check those out as well if you would like. I would really appreciate it if you did. And if you liked this video, of course, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up and leave a comment whether you did or didn't like the video. I'll take any sort of criticism that you have to offer. I'm always trying to improve my video making and anything you have to say will be music to my ears. Also let me know if there's anything specific that you would like to see in future videos and I will try to get it done. Until then, thank you so much yet again for watching this video and joining me here. I've been your host, Om Ledoux, hopefully teaching you a redstone trick or two and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.